I'm Govan Rao, director of the Center for Advanced Sensor Technology at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County, UMBC. We set up the center in 2006 with the notion that we would focus on disruptive innovation, sort of game-changing approaches to common problems that would lead to paradigm shifts in how various applications are conducted. So this is sort of an umbrella overall uh, theme and much of the common thread running through all our sensor technology is optics. And so although we have people from electrical engineering, molecular biology, chemistry, chemical engineering, the use of optical sensors is the common interconnecting thread that ties us all together. And so everyone here speaks the language of photonics as a baseline. A huge problem currently is that a neonate has extremely delicate skin and you have to stick a temperature sensor onto the skin of the baby and every day when you peel that sensor off, you peel the baby's skin off leading to scarring and pain, infection risk. So our team has come up with a salve or a patch that you can simply place on the baby's belly and remotely by looking at the fluorescent signature measure the baby's temperature. So this is again a paradigm shifting technology that would allow significant advances to be made in clinical medicine. Right now the most exciting project that we have here is the baby sensor. We are developing a wireless standoff sensor that can measure baby's temperature from a distance using visible light. Uh, and this sensor, unlike the previous sensors, is uh, something that will not harm baby's skin. Previous sensors were mostly wired because they are tiny and you need to glue them in place with really strong glue because the tail, as you can see, is giant. This will pull it out. The innovation that we have here that we don't need wires anymore, so there is nothing to pull out. It's lightweight and it's really easy to remove. So this is the uh, sensor that you typically have and if you want to apply it, you just can put it, it stays. You want to remove it, just peel off and that's it. You can interrogate it with blue light which excites the fluorescence of the patch and you can read it with a camera. The result is you can measure the temperature with exactly the same sensitivity, with exactly the same output rate as the standard sensor, but no injuries, no uh, infections and no discomfort for the baby. And it's sitting on the surface of a temperature controlled unit, so you can actually vary the temperature with accuracy 0.1c and you can uh, directly see the response of the sensor inside the incubator exactly in the same position that it will be placed when you're working with the baby. The other thing that we're very conscious of is the fact that we feel incredibly blessed and privileged to have access to the latest state of the art. One of the major foci of our center is to really trickle down the benefits of these technologies to the billions of people who live on less than $5 a day. What can we do with our advanced state-of-the-art technology to come up with low-cost sensors that will dramatically improve healthcare delivery, clean drinking water, energy, and things that could dramatically impact the lives of several people in low resource environments. And here's an example of the student-driven innovation we talked about. One of the class projects I had assigned them was to develop a low-cost incubator that could be used in low resource environments. So they targeted five areas of the world, uh, India, China, South Asia, Russia, Latin America, and came up, and Ethiopia, and came up with um, a market survey of the needs in that particular market, 
local materials that might be used to come up with an incubator that would sell for under $200 compared to the ones we find in our hospitals here, which are about $20,000. Um, these lower end units could save lives. And now this has resulted in funding from an agency called NCIIA, the National Collegiate Inventors and Innovators Alliance. And they've given us seed money to come up with a prototype, which we then are hoping to scale up. We've partnered with a manufacturer in India called Phoenix Medical Systems, and we're jointly working on a really low cost unit. And this has several innovations, one of which will be that the sides will be made of cardboard. The idea being that the chamber where the baby lies will be completely disposable. So that will aid in better hygiene and infection control and be available at a very low cost. And the temperature control piece of it will be a chamber that can be reused and built with low cost components with yet another innovation, the use of a simple clay pot for evaporative cooling. And in, in many hotter regions of the world, shade temperatures can reach 42 degrees Celsius, and you want to keep the incubator at a comfortable 37 degrees, and the only way to achieve that is to actually cool the chamber. And so this innovation is also going to be added to that. And then we're exploring several other innovations, such as putting a low-cost cellular modem on it, that can transmit pictures, so for telemedicine applications and the like. So this is an example of us using whatever we learn with our high-end research, translating that into a product that will save lives. And so our vision is to come up with these technologies that will then be licensed. We work extensively with several corporations, GE Healthcare, Sartorius Stedim Biotechnology, to name a couple of our major partners who we've been working with for a number of years to commercialize these technologies. And the vision is that the intellectual property royalties will come and feed the development of the low cost sensors that I just talked about. So this is creating uh, value out of sort of the higher end market and allowing us to do things for emerging and pre-emerging markets where they certainly cannot afford the kind of uh, therapies and devices that we're researching at the high end. Many of our innovations are really the result of uh, us talking to companies about their problems. You know, that's the one thing that tends not to happen in a traditional academic setting where people work on fairly esoteric, exotic aspects and the goal is to publish it in a high impact factor journal. Our impact we measure by how many people we're able to help. We keep our doors open and our eyes and ears open and welcome visits from anyone. And if you have a problem, come talk to us. We'd love to help you.